Listen, time for a scout report. There's going to be loads of these starting coming up. We're going to start exploring all the different sort of players that we might be able to bring in and uh, trying to think a little bit outside the box as well because some you start thinking about, well, Premier League options are going to be very, very spendy. Free transfers or loans are a little bit of hit and miss in terms of trying to predict them. So you've got to start looking outside the box a little bit, see if you can find some players, maybe some lads that are on the up and up, you know, stuff like that. And I think uh, one of the biggest injury issues that we've had this season has been left back. And even though I think Luke Shaw really turned a corner a few years ago in his career in terms of the ability that he possessed, there's still been inconsistencies and and in terms of performance, but also um, the injury record is probably never going to get better. Um, you need injury-resistant players. I think that's one of the reasons why an injured player should not rush to come back. Really take your time to rehab because th that injury proneness, like, can you think of a single injury prone player that was injury prone for a number of years and then it just went away? It doesn't really happen, does it? Now, Amas could be an option. You know, we, we've had promising fullbacks at the club that we've allowed to go out. You know, even a few years ago with Ethan Laird, who's doing very well in the championship at the moment. But, you know, obviously we had uh, Fernandez, who's definitely going to be on course to be in, like, a very, very good and probably international footballer. you got the likes of Harry Amas, who's only 16. Malassia, we have long-term question marks about from health and ability-wise. I think Ineos are making it fairly clear from the limited sort of information that we get out there that promising young players is what they're going to favour. Um, and there's a there's a position that, I, a left-back being a position that I think we probably going to need to strengthen in the summer. But I do think there is um, a bit of a phenom emerging as a full-back, and that's Patrick Dogu. Uh, from Lecce, 19 years of age, um, and he's been one of the best fullbacks in Syria this season. Now, physically uh, and technically, he is he is great. Um, something that you're gonna need to have in the Premier League, um, just as a matter of course. The physicality is is huge in the Premier League, um, and I think it makes him versatile in a sense because the way he plays he could invert into midfield whilst also still being able to hold width as well as get forward. And I think that's going to increasingly become uh, the attributes that are required of a modern-day fullback. We are going to ask them to get on the ball. We are going to ask them to defend. We are going to ask them to spread the play, and we are going to ask them to attack in the final third. So finding players that can do all three of those things and have the physicality and the pace and the brain to do all those three things is very difficult. Now, Dogu has got excellent energy and work rate, and he gets up and down that flank. He's got pace, he's got acceleration. It's a bit of an electric sort of vibe to him as well. And he's agile, and he uses his body really well. Uh, he, he has a lot of duels where he re wins free kicks. Um... And and it's something that I really enjoy seeing that. You know, it's it seems like he's playing with his head a little bit in terms of how and when and where to win a free kick that will alleviate a little bit of pressure on the side. And a combination of having a bit of a low center of gravity as well as real good upper body strength makes him probably quite an attractive profile for well, for United, actually. Um but for a fullback, I think those are some ideal traits to have. It's quite difficult to get off the ball when attacking, uh, but it's also difficult for opposition to twist him up because he's got that agility to be able to keep up with you. Now, from a technical point of view, he's got some outstanding characteristics, and I would say they the most outstanding ones are probably in his defensive abilities. 1v1, he's excellent. Uh, rarely gets beaten by his opponent. He's a tough tackler, and he uses his body well to hold off attackers when winning the ball or winning fouls uh, or, or taking possession. Um, he gets his body into really good areas. He's in the 98th percentile for dribblers tackled. Ridiculous. He's in the 96th percentile for tackles in the defensive third. In general, he's very composed in possession, which I... Th 
seeing what Kobe Mainu brought to the side this year is something I would love to see. Um, but he does appear to be a player that looks comfortable using instinct. Um, I don't know if this is a, an issue with Lecce, but sometimes he can be a little ponderous in possession. Maybe that, maybe that comes in tandem with being um, so composed. And I don't hate it because you got to think sometimes. Sometimes the right decision might be to delay the pass. Sometimes the right decision might be to not immediately, you know, play on one and give the ball away. But he does often stand there looking around for the pass. Now, that's why I said it. I don't know if that's on Lecce. Is the movement there in front of him? Is the, is the support there for him when he's on the ball? He doesn't lose it often. So probably is a good trait, but it is something that we've picked up. He's dribbling, he's strong. Um, I, I'd say it, it's very good, uh, but it still requires refinement. Um, still very, very effective in taking players on and driving forward at full speed. He's got quick feet, takes a, a lot of nice little neat touches, which is good alongside someone that's got explosive movement. Um, passing and the technical ability with passing looks strong, but I don't necessarily think he's being utilised correctly in the role at Lecce. Um, he has been able to show that he's got supply creativity. He's got intricate passes. He does have a good delivery from a wide area. And he does show potential and ability uh, to create when attacking. Um, you know, he had a stellar performance recently against AC Milan, where that was was quite highlighted. Now, from a technical point of view, oh sorry, from a, from a tactical point of view, he does like to get tight to his opponent, uh, disrupts them, a um, bit of a nuisance when they've got the ball. Um, he's very aggressive, a bit of a dog with it very front foot and sometimes because of that he can get drawn out of position he can get um he can get rolled if he dives in sometimes and he does sometimes overcommit, which can lead to potential danger because when a defender leaves the line he does leave space in behind him now mostly he's been able to recover well from these situations but against better wingers and maybe better sides that might be something that they look to try and target and exploit. Maybe it's just something that he has to overcome with age as well and, and has to go about learning. Now, he reads the game really well, particularly when there's dangerous situations emerging from opposition. He's always proactive, so he's not going to be someone that you see jogging over the halfway line while someone's taking a shot in our area. No, he, he seems to know when to apply pressure to intercept, um, and he does seem to have quite strong defensive awareness. And I would say that he looks his best as a left back in a back four, but he's also capable um, and has experience of playing in more advanced roles as a left wing back in a back five, which showcase um, you know, a different range of skills uh, and certainly a different range of attacking capabilities. I think the, the most outstanding thing, though, is the, the work rate and the energy. And I think when you look at United at the moment, you go, we're a bit flat, right? We are. But I think when you have a play like this, that's going to give you overlapping or underlapping options when going forward, as well as solid delivery from wide areas and probably potential to improve the current goal contributions, I think that makes him an asset. Now, mindset. Now, obviously, I don't know him, um, but he does appear to be someone that He's always going to demand the ball, which is a great character trait for a player to have. He doesn't hide from it. He drives forward when he gets the opportunity, and he seems to be all about being positive, whether that's positive in defending, positive moving the ball forward. He's very tenacious, um, and that tenacity uh, gets him from defence to attack in a flash and also from attack to defence in a flash, which is arguably one of the more important traits. Everyone can come alive when, you, when you're you in possession and you're looking to go and score a goal and be a hero, but can you do it when you're going the other way? Dog, who's recently come out and discussed his desire to play in the Premier League, which is what sort of put us on alert a little bit to go and have a look at him. So he's obviously got the intent and the ambition that's an element that can be understated 
um, in transfers. You know, if they really fancy their chances going somewhere, show the right sort of personality and the right sort of character to thrive in an area. And despite only being 19, he's improved during his time in the first team um, to a large degree. And he's already showcased his ability against the toughest opponents. This is a kid with excellent defensive 1v1, a real desire, energy, and he looks like he's got character. It's hard to see in a 19-year-old, but he looks like he's got character. I think he could be an impactful signing. Now, I don't know how much he's going to go for because Italian football bargains to be had, but also, you know, it's a serious league. So you're not going to pick up a complete bargain from there. But I'd inquire, absolutely. I would absolutely inquire because I think this is a player that you could see playing in the Manchester United first team for a decade or more. Let me know your thoughts. See you in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news, as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.